Hello everyone and welcome to this programming example, a practical video on how to implement k-anonymity using the Mondrian algorithm. Now this is only a basic example on only using only one quasi-identifier and if you're interested to, to learn how to work with many quasi-identifiers and also with categorical attributes, I'll be happy to expand on this video. Um, but for now, this is the data set we want to anonymize. And you can see this is only two columns. Um, we have the quasi-identifier, the H, and the sensitive attribute, the, the salary. If you don't, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, please go ahead and watch my video on k-anonymity, where I explain the theoretical concept and what k-anonymity is, what it does. I assume you already know what k-anonymity is, and I will just show you how to implement it in praxis. Okay, so this is the data we want to anonymize. We're going to use Python um, for it, and we're going to use no special library except for the pandas library. If you don't have pandas installed, just go to your terminal and type pip install pandas, uh, and this will install the pandas library. As you can see, in my case, I already have it installed, so it rightfully says requirement already satisfied. Let's get started with the programming. So we import pandas. Pandas is here to basically to handle data, to handle um, tables and to handle like, it's like a data handler, SPD, so we don't have to write pandas the whole time. Then we just define our K value. Let's just assume three for now and load our data. PD read, so PD is pandas, uh, as, you, as you know, read CSV because we have a CSV data. Uh, this is called data CSV. And just quickly print the data just just print the first five rows I think this is and just run this real quick to see if everything works as intended and there you have it uh, the first five rows and it seems that we can at least load our data and access it okay now let's get to the actual uh, Mondrian algorithm the Mondrian algorithm is a recursive algorithm meaning it calls itself until a certain requirement is fulfilled and then it then it's done and, and we, we have our output. What the Mondrian algorithm does is it, um, it halves the data into partitions and then does this again and again and again until k-anonymity is fulfilled. And I will quickly show you how to do this. What I'm showing you is not the exact Mondrian algorithm, it's a bit of a simplified version, but I think it's much, e much easier to understand this way. So we're going to define our function Mondrian and while we're passing the data or partitions of the data, and also the k value, which is really not necessary because k is global anyway, but um, let's, just, let's just assume you have k stored somewhere else. Maybe you make a graphical user interface, so that's why you need to pass it. But in this case, we actually would not need to pass it. So we initialize our, our, empty, our empty set of partitions. So this is where all the final partitions are going to be stored. And we're going to define our breaking um, condition. So if data length, so that that means like how many um, records are still in this partition, because as I said, it's, it's, it's recursive. So um, now at, at first go, I pass all the data, which is, I don't know, like 37 rows. And then next I would only pass 18, data, uh, 18 rows, then maybe nine and so on. So if this length is actually smaller or, or equal, um, then well, actually, we can do it. Well, let's just do it with uh, smaller or equal, less or equal than two times k minus one. Now, I'll explain this. Um, now, why two k minus one? Let's just assume in this case k is three, right? We know k is three, and let's assume the current partition is of length length partition is let's say six. Now, in this case, this is uh, this is obviously two times k. And so if I divide this by half, so I, I have a left hand and a right hand side of this, then I have two partitions of length three, which is perfect because I, I now can fulfill K anonymity or three anonymity. But if I have a, a length of partition of five, then this is obviously two times K minus one, then I, I would be left with two partitions, you know, partition one, would be of length three and partition two would be of length two. Now with this partition, now this does not, or this is, it's not possible to 
um, to apply three anonymity to this because I have only two entries. So as you know, I have to have three entries that are the same. And obviously I can't do this if I have only two. So the only way to, um, to achieve this is to break um, to break at this point if I have uh, only five uh, five entries and not uh, partition it any further because this would mean that um, okay I, I have five and not three but this is okay because K anonymity says I must have at least three um, three uh, three entries of the same quasi identifiers in in one equivalence class so that's why this is two K minus one. So in this case, I just um, append uh, the current the current data to to our petition or to our set, and return the data. Okay. Now let's get to the algorithm. We first define our define quasi identifiers. We just say quasi identifier is in this case. It's just age again. Um, if you implement this via a graphical user interface or in a notebook, you might do it a bit differently, of course. I'm going to hard code a little bit because um, I just want to show you how it works and not to give you like a complete uh, anonymization um, well tool. Next, we're going to sort by uh, quartz identifiers. And this means that um, this way we can actually uh, apply this partitioning process in a meaningful way because... Uh, when we sort it by quasi identifiers, in this case by age, we always have the similar age groups or the similar ages next to each other. This is how we can build our equivalence classes. So we're going to sort it with quick data sort values. Well, if I can type by in this by quasi identifiers, we could we could just write age in this case, but let's be a little bit uh, general. So we have now we need the number of total values to see. Um, this is basically, a, again, in this case, we can only just say the length because we don't have uh, many more quasi identifiers than one. But um, again, just to have a little bit more practice, a practical example, we can do it like this. Data age count. And now we need the number. Um, now, now, we, now we divide this um, by, by two. And so to have the mid number, and the way to do this, if we would, uh, so SI is like the number of total numbers, uh, total values. So if we would write something like this, um, if SI would be an odd number, then SI could be a float number, and SI means like the splitting point, or it's basically the total point. Mid is the splitting point, and to have an integer number, we just uh, use two times the divide uh, sign to have. Um, to have uh, a, an integer number, I can I can show you this real quick uh, in the terminal on the left. So if I do something like this, there you go. This is eight and seventeen divided by two is eight point five. So you can see that um, using the divided by sign of the slash twice just makes an integer out of the um, out of the result. Okay, there you go. Okay, good. Now we have the midpoint. Um, now what we do is we uh, split the data into a left-hand side and a right-hand side. The left-hand side is simply data, um, everything up to this, um, this splitting point, and the right-hand side is data um, until the end from this splitting point. Now we're extending our partitions with not left hand and right hand side of course because we don't know whether they fulfill k anonymity yet but with the Mondrian algorithm here with this function we're currently in that's why it's recursive applied on the left hand side using k and the same with our right hand side and then we finally return the partitions that's it that's the algorithm and what we now um, have to do is we have to um, we have to basically combine all these partitions into one final k anonymous data set. So we have our results partitions. Um, so this is basically calling the algorithm 
Mondrian with data k. So this is the initial call of the algorithm. And then we're going to append our, 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 our partitions and we're going to actually make the h brackets. Because now we have our partitions and they're fine, but we did not yet anonymize anything, right? We have we still have the same information in the h column. So what we do is we say we have an empty set here. And I just realized I forgot the equal sign here during the initialization. Okay. And um, now we, we're going to loop through all the partitions. Um, partition and enumerate result partitions because remember this is where all the partitions now are because they're all in this because the Mondrian algorithm the, the the root algorithm basically has been applied to this set here so we have result partitions start equals one and make this a little bit smaller maybe uh, to fit everything into one uh, one line then we have the the minimum uh, now we need the minimum of the maximum h to actually create our h brackets. So the minimum is partition. Um, so the, the the minimum h basically, um, and the maximum is the maximum h. So just so you know what what happens here if the ages in this bracket are, let's say 21, 22, 23. I want to, to have as final output 21 until oh till 23. So that's why I need the minimum and the maximum age value. Okay, then we then we generate uh, we generate our bracket. Let's just, just call it gen. Um, when f f just means I can I can put a variable into a into a string. Um, again, I'm not going too much into detail about the Python code. But I'm just going to use the variable part min. Uh, then I write a, a dash and I use the variable part max. And this is now this is now what I want to substitute the actual age with. Now we're going to say partition. This is um, another great thing about Python. I can just make this and it substitutes all the ages, uh, all the ages all the age entries in the in the in the database okay great now we are going to print out what we did to to look at it i mean we could basically skip this step and just print it to csv to have our anonymized results but um let's just uh, print it out to see what's going on let's just say petition and the length of the petition um to see whether we've made any errors, so this is um, so this is just so that we we can see how long how big these partitions are because as soon as they are larger, uh, smaller of course than k, we've made a mistake. So I guess there are some brackets wrong. Uh, looks correct. Then that we can even print out if length of the partition is smaller than k. Let's say, okay, print, we have an error, partition too small, and if not, if everything works as intended, so it's k or larger than k, then we just print the partition. Okay. Um, okay, if, we, if we're finished, we just um, anonymized data, let's say, is we're gonna use pandas again to concatenate all the partitions, um, all the partitions into one big data frame, and we're gonna ignore the index because the usually these things are indexed as you as you saw in the terminal output before. And then we're gonna save it. Anonymized data. We save it to CSV. Uh, anon.csv index is false again. And yeah, this should be about it. Let's see whether we made any, any mistakes and just run this algorithm. Python mondrian.py 
and of course um, if, you, if you write everything in one go you're bound to make mistakes I forgot a bracket here I think technically this bracket uh, is not really necessary but I just you know sometimes like like to do this okay got a mistake again partitions is not defined because I had fear partition and not partitions okay I'm gonna just I'd leave this all in because I mean it's just natural to make these typos um, not everything works always in one go result partitions is not defined again an S uh, somewhere wrong yeah there it is result results partitions no result partitions result how did I write it yeah, should, should be fine okay no object to concaten can concatenate um, yeah of course <laughs> I did not um, I did not I did not fill my results final <laughs> okay so results final um, dot append the partition I think this should work uh, we, we see already by by the way the partitions um, they look good you can see all of them are above length 3 and we have k equals 3 so as you can see this is the, the downside basically of this algorithm because it doesn't really um, provide k anonymity if the partitions don't work out that is actually possible to achieve k and uh, 3 anonymity in this case so this is 3 anonymous but it is also 4 anonymous which means I have lost a little bit more information than I probably would have wanted to lose so that's why it could be a problem in this uh, in this implementation but again as I've said this is just a an example on how to how to achieve this you can see here that now we've got rid of all the errors uh, and we also we can also look at the result in the CSV file. There you got it. And there you have it. There we have all the age brackets and the um, respective salaries. Now we can try this with different values for K. Of course, you can always pass it to the program. You don't need to do it like me. Um, if you do K equals five, for example, you can see that all the equivalence classes are of length nine. And this is what I've um, what I've explained before. If a partition has a length nine, that means that it can't be divided into two partitions, because the one partition would be five, which would be fine. I can achieve five anonymity, but the other partition would be four. So, and I can't achieve k anonymity with only four entries, which is why this implementation has this huge flaw of like if if it's just like this because I have 36 entries and this is obviously 9 times 4 then I can't really achieve 5 anonymity using this algorithm I would use uh, I would have to use more sophisticated splitting uh, maybe random splitting um, to because now I know basically that I can't achieve it but this is only good uh, this is also good because it shows you that I need to take my data into account uh, in order to really tailor my k anonymity algorithm to the data I really it's really hard to have a one-size-fits-all solution in this regard. But anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and helpful uh, just to see an implementation, a very basic implementation of the Mondrian algorithm, how to achieve k-anonymity beyond, the, uh, beyond the, the theoretical explanations. And again, let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see maybe how to implement L-diversity, T-closeness, or maybe how to implement k-anonymity in a more... Uh, thorough way using more quasi identifiers using also numerical attributes uh, categorical attributes of course because numerical attributes are a little bit easier to handle so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video